Thank you, Samuel. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Valencia, are you there? So, thanks to Pivy and Brandon for uh, sharing the insights, connecting with uh, what was talked about yesterday. Let's try to address this complex topic, design awareness. Can we make it mainstream? So this will be our triggering conversation, triggering question for conversation today. You had so many fascinating content and topics and questions coming up. And thanks to all the speakers yesterday and this morning. So let me just position the point of view of where I'm talking from. I run a design agency called Architempo and uh, another one connected spread. So that is my design practitioner my design practice. I'm professor in a culinary hospitality school in Lyon, in France, Institut Paul Bocuse, and I do some design research. And the third part is, anyone here knows IXDA, Interaction Design Association? I was the global president of IXDA for two years, and we are looking at UX, UI, VR, AR, whatever. And Pechakcha Night, anyone knows Pechakcha? I know that Paivi was a Pechakcha speaker. I'm the organizer of Pechakcha Brussels. So I'm into storytelling, narratives, and stuff like that. And we'll spend some 20 minutes to question and explore what we have been looking into, ex uh, questioning, and stuff like that. So that's the point of view. 30 years ago, I made a book on this filmmaker, Satyajit Ray. I don't know if anyone has seen a movie by Ray, if you haven't, he's, he was an Indian filmmaker. And he, he's the one who led me into design. And we'll come back to that later, if we have time, because we are pressed by time. The tension is time. Anyone knows this character? Yeah. I happen to have been the head of new media of the publishing company of this uh, character. So my job was, how do we translate stories from what is happening on paper to screen. And that's a complex design challenge. How do we do translation? By the way, what I would like to do, if you don't mind, can the tech team put some light for a few seconds on the audience? Great. Can everyone stand up? Yeah. Yeah. OK. I would like us to thank the translators, because translating is a tough job. I would like us to translate, uh, to thank Corina, Kike, Alicia, and all the tech team. So if we can give a strong applause to all of them. Where are you, Corina? Without all the team, we won't be there. And remember yesterday, Edge Manzini was telling, design is about creating conditions for things to happen. Corina and team, you have created conditions for us to have conversations. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, this being said, we'll try to have conversation, and in order to have conversation, we need to trigger stuff. Brigitte was mentioning the triadic thinking just for the sake of, again, point of view, I'm born in Congo, Zaire. Sometimes it was called Congo, then Zaire, then Congo, from Indian parents, and I live in Brussels. So I look at systems, or I try to look at systems from different perspectives. And Alicia and Kike, thanks for all the branding you have done for this uh, conference. Because Samuel, you are telling, today we'll try to round the circle. As designer, my proposition is let's break again the circle. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with that? Yeah, okay. So we have about 10 minutes to try to break circles around design awareness. Everybody knows these acronyms. They have been expressed in different ways during the two days. Volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, and whatever. All these are contextual elements we are busy with, and Pivy reminded us through one image 
where the tension is. So building on that context, I would like to share with you two paradoxes to begin the conversations and trigger. The word experience. Everybody talks nowadays about experience design. Can we design experience? My provocation would be no, we cannot. We can design conditions for experience to happen. And that is a, an approach which re-questions our design position. So when we are talking about awareness, we need to be aware of some paradoxes and the doxa, the shared narrative we have. Second paradox, innovation. The word innovation is everywhere, anywhere. The paradox of innovation is that we can talk about innovation when innovation has been done. Otherwise, we are projecting ourselves. So if we don't take those into account in our thinking approach, then we are stuck in process, method, and whatever. So I'm interested more in inertia. What happens if we talk to our board of directors and all these decision makers, and we try to understand what are the inertia factors? How can design play a role? We are slow down by, in English we use the word drift, in Spanish derivas, en français dérive. We are in complex systems where there are many derivas. How can we design with this as a context? How can we not reduce complexity, but try to understand the currents? Where are the flows going? And that's complex. And yesterday we had with the education panel some questioning about how can we try to get hold on some variables about understanding the flows of drift. The notion of proximity was evoked yesterday, again today. I prefer to look at the notion of presence. It is interconnected, obviously. Everything is in everything, Brandon, you said. Our challenge is to try to find some, in Chinese medicine, we would talk about acupuncture zone. Our role as designer is to try to find the zone of acupuncture where we can punct. And socio-tech cultural bodies are what keep us busy. We talk a lot about human-computer interaction, but we forgot, for those of you who are engineers, that human is plural, computer is plural, and interaction is plural. And that changes the paradigm of our designerly approach. So if we replace design awareness by knowledge awareness, what would be our questioning? And if we say, OK, there are things you know you know. Everybody knows that. There are things you know you don't know. There are things you don't know you know. And there are things you don't know you don't know. Where are we as designers? Where is our audience? Where are our stakeholders? Where would you put the policymakers? Where would you put ourselves? And stuff like that. So if we, in French, we say le pas de côté, if we step aside and we look at system and we begin to re-question our notions of design, innovation, knowledge and company, what would be our questioning? Maybe we could have that. We are in Valencia. Who has not had paella here? Everybody? I don't see any hand raising. For the vegetarian, is there any vegetarian paella? I guess, yeah. So don't worry if you're a veg. So the proof is in the paella. Of course, everybody knows that the proof is in the pudding. In Valencia, we'll talk about paella. In Italy, we'll talk about risotto. In India, we'll talk about khichri. But we have to be more precise. The proof of the paella is in the eating which allows us to change some of the thinking in terms of process. What is eating? It's experiencing. It's having tasted the stuff. 
And tasting the stuff is our job as designers to try to get a sense of. Can we put back the light on the audience? If you don't mind. I'm trying to wake up you every five minutes because I don't know what is happening with this audience. Who does cooking for everyday survival? Okay, quite a lot number. Who does cooking for more than 10 people? Okay, who does cooking for 500 people? Complex question. What I'm trying to inject through that question, the notion of scale. Scale is a complex question. So how are we going to make good paella for 500 people is different than how are we going to make paella for 50 people. Replace the word paella by AI, because we are talking of awareness. So many people have heard about AI. I'm curious to know how many people know exactly what is AI, even half of the AI scientists, by the way. Is there any AI guru in the room? Yep. Replace the word AI by AI slash ML, artificial intelligence slash machine learning. That allows us to be more specific. What are the proof of this in the... Remember, what I want us to do is put a verb. Let's replace that by this. Metaverse has got so high awareness. Nobody knows what is metaverse. But everybody is running like chicken without heads. That's the reality of our actuality. Half of the chicken without heads are disbalancing systems. If I use that as a metaphor, that's a tough one for us as designers. Any design septic in the room? I don't think so, otherwise you won't be here. So it's useless to ask that question. So how are we talking to outsiders who are skeptics about design? The same with this question. So I'm replacing metaverse by design, and you get the process. But I'm questioning, is it design as a name or design as a verb? That changes again perspective. So what I would like us to just accumulate those questions, and as designers, I think one of the dominant narrative is we are stuck in what I would call a dichotomy problem slash solution. And we as designers, at least that would be my provocation, and I, I would be happy to debate about this. We need to move beyond that. We need to understand paradoxes which are happening in our context. We need to map them, we need to identify the gap zone, and we need as provocators to re-question systems and try to spot the flows I was mentioning, and we need to prototype. Yesterday, Anna, you mentioned, and some others, the importance of prototyping. Buchanan was mentioned by Kike in his notes on the website about the four orders of design. If you haven't read some text by Richard Buchanan, you must. Buchanan was telling in two words what is design. Design is doing philosophy with the hands. And Ezio Manzini was sharing with us how he was doing philosophy with the hands yesterday. So this needs to be put back in the conversations. I'll skip that one and I'll come to one of my favorite topics, which is utopia. Because we are busy with some utopian questions. And we are trying to bring some energy towards some directions where things could be interesting. The tension is that we are busy with so many things we think are util. User experience, usability, utility, all those are the obsessions of our current narratives. How can we design open up? And I'm interested in things which are futile. Because futility might help us to look at systems in ways which are may be interesting for our societies. Everybody knows that. It's part of the mantra of any design thinking, blah, blah. Okay? How can we re-question that? Everybody knows the uh, 20th century. 
binary thinking, function, form, form, function. I would like to break that and add this one. We need to put fiction into the tension between form and fiction. So, in a nutshell, what I would say, design is about making interactions between fiction, function, and form. This might help us to raise awareness about what design could be, is, should be, and so forth. The second one, design always begins with a narrative and gets concrete through interactions, artifacts, environments, whatever they are. It always begins with the expression of intention, and that is where it's complex. How can we shape the intention space in meaningful ways? So we are back to all the presentations you had yesterday, where we need to reposition our thinking and our projection capabilities, taking that into account. And I'll give you three examples. I mentioned IXDA, Interaction Design Association. It's about 130,000 designers where we are professionals. What we are busy doing nowadays is let's stop trying to push where design should go Let's be the stewards of where design conversations are happening and do some bottom-up activities in working with diversity of different voices. Second example is Pechakcha I mentioned. Bottom-up stories. Let's accumulate stories. I was mentioning the cuisine. I'm a professor in a culinary school where this guy Paul Bocuse was named as the Pope of French gastronomy. And my role in that culinary hospitality school is to bring design. Eight years ago, I was the ET, the extraterrestrial. In a culinary school, talking about design. Nowadays, we are having six, seven different types of classes because we are looking into farm to fork. And thanks, Brandon, to bring the food systems in your presentation because we could go longer into that. So I'm busy doing co-creation camp. The word co-creation was mentioned yesterday. Looking at how do we have food tech people talking to food designers, talking to food scientists and food entrepreneurs and making them design literate. Because that's one of the issues. So what I'm trying to tell here is that we have different types of design narratives emerging, some of them less present, and we need to enlarge the continuum of design narratives. And we have to work on narrative design, or at least that is where I see one of our major roles. And we'll have a debate about that, hopefully. And let's go back to this logo. Kike and Alicia, I think this logo is a summary in few seconds, in one visual, of top-down, bottom-up, lateral approaches in terms of raising design awareness. And that is where we need to work on. And often, as a framework, we talk too much about design thinking. My positioning in the workshop I run is we need to empower by design tooling. We are not makers, we are empowering some people by providing tools. That allows us to rethink about systems. And we need to tell about tools. And that is the topic of this panel, raising awareness. If people understand that they have some power of variability on tools, they will be more participative. And of course, training. So you see, this is a kind of iterative process that we need to set up. And I will leave you with this question because I know that I might run out of time and Alicia is getting nervous and blah, blah. Is it okay? They have time to read. From contextual exploration to innovation and visioning, how can design help frame conditions for betterment of humanity respecting planet? Would that be an interesting question? Is a question I'm asking to all of us here based on all the presentations we had yesterday and this morning and rethink systems in order to add a second sub-question, but which is a kind of structural question, how do we raise awareness? But if we replace the, way, the word awareness by attention, how do we raise attention on what 
we are busy doing in order to try to better humanity is a complex design question, which I'm sure we'll be busy with. So thank you very much and looking forward to the interactions.